The macroeconomics and politics have absolutely smashed the Intel stock over the last year. And in fact, it has lost nearly 45% of its value. So the question is today in 2023, is Intel an investable stock and what could potentially lie ahead for the stock? Semiconductor stocks, in my opinion, are a must hold portion of an investment portfolio for most investors. And certainly if I look at the industry going forward, it is an absolute no brainer. Setting aside the politics between East and West and all the nonsense that's played out over the last year, one of the front runners in this industry sector that is definitely going to be there for the long term is Intel. Now, of course, Intel has taken a bad rap over the last year, and certainly this has reflected in the stock price. But I believe Intel has got huge innovation runways, on top of which I really do believe that they are one of the front runners in terms of where the industry is going. So with that said, we're going to jump in and have a look at our stock screen app. This is our exclusive app that we're going to be making available to the public later this year if you haven't yet signed up as a beta tester potentially if you haven't yet joined the early waiting list go to stockscreen.app and sign up now because like I said this is an absolute game changer for stock market investors we have literally taken all the hard work out of assembling data we've eliminated spreadsheets and we've literally put all the data into a system that allows you to very quickly screen stocks and eliminate these zombie companies and fine companies fundamentally financials and make accurate decisions so the stock is currently trading at $30.11 and as we see it has come off those highs of uh, $60 plus and it has fallen back quite sharply now the P ratio is currently sitting at 9.32 price to book most recent quarter 1.17 price to sell is sitting at 1.61 and price to free cash flow is sitting at negative 9.23 if we come down to analyst ratings, we've got 23 hold ratings, two buy ratings and five sell ratings. So the majority of analysts believe that the stock is a hold. Look at the market cap. We've got 124.26 billion enterprise, 133.59 billion. And looking at the financial stats, trailing 12 month revenue, 69.54 billion. Debt most recent quarter, 39.52 equity sitting at 99.89 billion and net income sitting at positive 13.3 billion cash on the most recent quarter on hand 22.56 billion and free cash flow sitting negative 13.46 billion if we look at the shares and stocks trading hands inside a holding 0.07 short interest is relatively small sitting at 1.76 and the institutional holding sitting at 63.77. Currently, there are 4.13 billion shares outstanding. Now, if we look at the cash flow statement, we can see that uh, it's been a tough two years, 2021 in the trailing 12 months. They've gone uh, on operating cash flow 33.15 to 35 to 29 to 13.53 billion. Let's not forget though, they are putting a lot of capital into their factories. And so there has been a lot of capital deployment. Looking at uh, the free cash flows, we've gone 16, 20, 9.6 to negative 13.46 billion. So hopefully some of that capital deployment will actually start to pay off over the next couple of years. Looking at the assets, we've gone 136, 153, 168, 174. So good growth on asset and the same on equity. They've gone 77, 81, 95 and 99.89. Look at the income statement. Uh, they've done pretty good on top line revenue, except for the trading 12 months where they've fallen back slightly. 71, 77, 79 down to 69. Gross profit, they've gone 42, 43, 43 and then 40, uh, 32.38. So falling back. Operating income, 22, 23, 19, and 8. Net income's gone 21, 20, 19, and 13. And uh, if we are looking at those earnings per share, which is a very telling story, 4.81, 5.07, 4.85 down to 3.23, which is part of the reason why so many investors bailed ship. Looking at the fundamental scorecard, this is super interesting. 75% on the scorecard. The only place where they've fallen short is a little bit of shareholder dilution. Uh, and then looking at the debt, uh, we have got a 100% scorecard, 39% on the uh, debt to equity, which is below our 40% uh, requirement. Current ratio, 1.77, free cash flow, 13.23. So that's strong. Momentum, 33%. So strong on the top line. So that's uh, revenue and gross profit is looking good. But the operating cash flow, net income, operating cash flows, and free cash flows, a little bit inconsistent. And then looking at the growth, 
Uh, return on equity, 14%. Return on asset, 2.93. Return on investor capital, 14.04. And then, like I said, a little bit of pressure uh, looking at that uh, earnings per share. Look at the dividend. They've got a 4.82% dividend with a 75% scorecard. Uh, the payout ratio is uh, currently a little bit under pressure. But uh, if we have a look at the rest of the scorecard, they are looking pretty good. Uh, so on uh, the dividend of 4.82%, you definitely can't fault them. Now, looking at our summaries on terms of the fundamentals, 75%, which is relatively strong on fundamentals, debt 100%, momentum could definitely be better, and then growth, well, an acceptable 50%. Now, as we move across and start having a look at our DCF calculators, and this is really where the interesting part comes in. Now, of course, they are sitting on a P ratio of 9.32, which is relatively low. And uh, the industry analysts are predicting growth out somewhere between the order of 8 and 12%. We're going to be very, very conservative. We're going to go 6, uh, sorry, we're going to go 4, 6, and uh, 8 in terms of the growth factors. And we're going to see exactly where we come out on that P ratio of 8. Uh, we're going to actually stick with 9, which is what the industry is at at the moment and that brings us out to a 3648 price point and of course they are currently trading at 3011 so look at the margin on that at the moment that means there is a potential margin of about 21 percent and then of course if we had to look at the pre, uh, price to free cash flows we wouldn't be able to do a calculation on that that is because they have negative free cash flows largely based on the fact that there has been uh, capital deployment they are of course investing a lot of money into uh, their factories they are uh, looking at those plants and bringing more production capacity online. And so, uh, of course, there has been a lot of capital outflow of, over the last while, which is why we're looking at those negative free cash flows at the moment. But uh, if I look at the stock purely based on the DCF calculation, um, I would say that the stock is probably fairly priced at this moment in time. And I definitely think this is a good time to start taking a nibble at the stock. I think at these price levels, Intel is a definite uh, stock that is should definitely be on your buying list. If you're looking at the semiconductor industry space uh, and you believe that this is an industry sector that's worth investing into like I do, uh, then certainly Intel at these price points, you gotta be you gotta you gotta be really very silly not to start looking at the stock at these price points. And certainly uh, there could still be some pain ahead for the company in the next couple of months, but there are a lot of things in the macroeconomic happening where the price could gradually start moving up and then you could probably lose out on the opportunity. And one thing we always talk about is that you can never time the market perfectly. So once again, my best advice here is to dollar cost average in. Now, I do want to mention again, if you haven't yet gone and signed up for stockscreen.app, we are making this app available to the public later this year. Darwin and I put an enormous amount of work into this app. We have literally got sick and tired of working with spreadsheets and assembling data, and we've put it into an application for ourselves. We've decided to make it available to the public. We are currently working with some beta testers on the system. So if you want to become a beta tester, also make sure you sign up uh, for the early notification list because as we need more beta testers, we're going to draw from that list. And of course, when we do make it available to the public, we will let you know first. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. And uh, also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. Mm -hmm.